First no dumb question is from Laura, Chicago N1 and N2, heart, blue heart. Okay, all right, yeah. One, who is Gronk? Two, why does Travis do the archer pose when he enters the stadium? Three, can you please explain one versus two point conversions and why teams choose to do one over the other? I never know what is going on. All right, we got you, Laura. All right, one, Gronk. Who is Gronk? Gronk is uh, the uh, keeper of the turf. It's on every field has somebody who is in charge of maintenance of the turf, and that is known as the Gronk of that field. He's such bullshit. He just blatantly lied to you. He's he's playing the fiddle right now. Yeah. Rob Gronkowski is um, known as one of the greatest football players of all time. <laughs> one of? You're just going to say one of. I was wondering where you're going to go with it. I say greatest football players of all time. Oh, you did say that. <sighs> yeah. I didn't say anything about tight end, which was the position that he played that he was extremely good at. Arguably the best to ever do it. What is Gronk? Who is Gronk? Gronk is, uh, he's like the most dominant force. Well, let's start with his name. R- Rob Gronk Gronkowski is short is most... for Rob Gronkowski. There you go. All right. I see you. You're getting good at this whole, like, break it down <laughs> thing, man. This guy's good, man. He's a tight end, played for the Patriots, Buccaneers. Am I missing anybody else? Yeah. Won four Super Bowls. Uh, got a list of accolades that, um, yeah, we'll get him a first ballot Hall of Fame. One of the most unstoppable forces. I think Travis was on to something when he was getting to that. I mean, blocking, defending. You know, he was just one of the most unstoppable players of all time. And when you become that unstoppable, they just shorten your name because they get tired of saying Gronkowski, Gronkowski, Gronk. It's like, no, that's just Gronk. That's Gronk. That's Gronk, baby. And then other people try and steal it. You know, where you know Travis is now. Uh, what has been known as Baby Gronk? No, I'm Fake Gronk. Baby Gronk's a that's whole right. different. That's a kid. Sorry. That's Travis a, that's has been known as Fake person. Gronk. Now there is Baby Gronk, which that's a whole other issue. Fake Gronk head ass, as uh, Von Miller would say. As Von Miller said, our good friend Von Miller. That's my dog. If you guys want to know more about Gronk, just go ahead and watch our episode that we had with Rob that's Gronkowski. Right. Yeah, and you'll get to know him. Don't know why we didn't think of that right away. Yeah, exactly. You'll know exactly who Gronk is. I guess I have to answer the second part to this question. I do the archer pose uh, when I enter the stadium because I always I wanted to do something when I when I ran out of the tunnel. And I'm like, man, you know what's really been motivating for me is to always, you know, dream big, always shoot for the stars. So I'm I'm just out there shooting up for the stars, baby. I um one of my favorite quotes from uh, my guy Deion Sanders, prime time. Um, he says, if your uh, if your dreams aren't bigger than you, then there's a problem with your dreams. So uh, don't forget to shoot for the stars, ladies and gentlemen. And number three, uh, can you Tom, please are you making that up on the spot, or is that really why you do the archer pose? No, that's really why I do the you archer pose. You put that much thought into the I, – I just thought you thought it was something cool. And you just yeah, you think I just wear number 87 just because? Well, I know that you. it's not because of the reason you've given people. Why do you think it is then? I think you just got given the jersey and you just wear 87 trips. And no, you found Jason, out that that's what leader. happens to offensive linemen, Jason. <laughs> As skill guys, we get to pick our jerseys. You get to pick it? All right. Yeah. So one versus two point conversions. This is the real, uh, I guess, not dumb question. Looking forward to answering. Why do teams choose one or the other? So typically a one point conversion, Laura, is a extra point try where you're kicking a field goal now from the what is it, the 15 or something like that? I believe the 25. Is it the 25? I don't fucking know. That's a great question, man. I think it's 15 for some reason. Yeah, Either we way. suck at this, but yeah. Yeah, the one-point conversion is an easy chip shot field goal for the field goal kicker. Typically, a very, very high percentage chance of getting an extra point. Uh, we're talking above 95% likelihood that this thing's going through the uprights, and we're going to get seven points instead of six. Yeah. But a two-point conversion is essentially you get the ball – after you score with one attempt to get the ball in the end zone, you get the you can either run it in or throw it in. If you don't get it, you get no points. If you get it, you get two extra points. Typically from the two yard line, unless there's a penalty, then you get it at the one yard line. Yeah. The penalty on the defense, that is. But yeah. Correct. That was pretty yeah. good. I mean, I I understood it. So um my head it was kinda of, was going kinda of, kinda of got off track a little bit there, but I ain't gonna lie. I ain't gonna lie. That was pretty good, bud. Yeah, could have could have got more direct with it, probably. From oh my Love is a lie, Indy, and two. That's a long, Ooh, that's a long handle. Yeah. Yeah. Couldn't just throw the old name on there. Can you explain why analysts say that a running back is running downhill? Oh, I mean, yeah. 
Have you ever seen anybody run downhill? Have you ever, you ever watched Isaiah Pacheco? <laughs> yeah. Have you ever seen anybody literally run down a hill? They look like they're like running faster. They're they're running with a purpose. There's also a physicality that kind of yeah. comes with running downhill that uh, that you would li- that you like to see. Like if yeah. you just watch Isaiah Pacheco run, he no. runs downhill. Uh, he runs like a locomotive. I mean, it's like a Pistons firing type run to him. But it's fucking Tasmanian devil, man. Who is the most downhill? Running back of all time. So downhill running back is a guy who builds up momentum as he's running the ball. And it typically turns into like almost like an unstoppable force. The more momentum that it builds up right away. I think of my favorite running back growing up. Shout out to uh, the bus. Jerome Jerome Bettis. Bettis. Yeah, the bus. Another guy I think of would be Larry Zonka. I feel like yeah. when he was very similar, yeah. when he got yeah. moving, he just kind of yeah. was bouncing people off of him. I've only seen highlights, so yeah. I would say Jim Brown could be one at times, but I feel like he was too – he had too much of the shiftiness at the same time. He had thunder and lightning. You know what I mean? Jim Brown had it all. He had it all. So I, 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 I think he was more under control. Like running downhill is like – the running back is going to fall on his face if somebody doesn't try and tackle him. The one I think of right now is Derrick Henry. Oh. In our game today. I mean, the guy, he's a lot of outside, inside zone, outside zone. Got to get him before he gets. Yeah. You, yeah. you, you get, yeah. You, he gets his legs moving, gets some momentum going downhill. Yep. Oh, baby. That's a, it's a big man to try and break down. No doubt. All righty. Good question. Good question. Great question. I actually enjoyed talking Add about that. good for right. Abrams. Oh, you got it. I'll take it. What is a sack? I need help. Well, a sack is when... A lot of types of sacks. If we're talking about football sacks... Yeah. When we're talking about football sacks is when the quarterback gets tackled behind the line of scrimmage. That's... uh, That's it. But... um, Why is it called a sack? Sack loss? I don't know. You wrapped him up like a... You wrapped him up in a sack? Yeah. What is the root of the term sack for football? Oh, here we go. Thanks, intern Brandon. Thanks, Brandon. The term sack was first popularized in the 1960s by Hall of Fame defensive end Deacon Jones. Deacon Jones. Who felt that a quarterback being sacked devastated the offense in the same way that a city was devastated when it was sacked. He was referencing a time (laughs) where uh, villages were ransacked, I believe. Jones provided the L.A. Times reporter with some other detailed imagery about his forte. You take all the offensive linemen and put them in a burlap bag, and then you take a baseball bat and you beat on the bag. You're sacking them. You're bra- you're bagging them, and that's what you're doing with the quarterback. I kind of like the first. That was kind of disturbing. I'm not gonna lie. Um, yeah, that was a little bit like that serial was a killer. Little fucking this guy, man. That I like was the back first in the gladiator days, man, when football was fucking football, man. Fuck. Well. The good deacon is right. Um, beating the fuck out of people. In a, in sacks sack. are Jesus. devastating to drives. They're devastating to offenses. A loss and a, a loss of downs is a huge play for the defense, um, which is why they are so coveted and defense alignment get paid so much. And boy, did we see a few sacks on Monday night. Oh, we're going to get to it. Oh, yeah. baby. Pretty crazy. That was a yeah. no dumb question that we had to have answered. Thank you, intern Brandon. Yeah. And uh, for good for Abrams for asking. Kind of disturbing, but thank you. And shout out to Deacon Jones. All righty. Last dumb question from at Beth Ann Ham. What is the little fanny pack thing for on some players? Saw one on Patrick on Sunday and Jason on Monday. That, my friends, is called it's a, a hand warmer. warmer. Yeah, yeah, it's just it's a hand warmer. warmer. Just keep your it hand is. warm. Or if it's raining outside, to keep your hand dry. I typically never use hand warmers to keep my hands warm. It's usually just to keep them dry. That's all I care about. I don't wear them because I've gotten like held by them and like kind of like it's just tackled by them. Not necessarily tackled by them, but they'll definitely slow you down. Yeah. They're supposed to have Velcro on them. So they're supposed to just rip off if somebody tries to tackle you by it. But it's still got a little tug to it. If you if you know what I mean, if you're not like just absolutely you don't wanna, hanging on by it. Yeah, you don't so want to wear just, it if Sauce Gardeners guarding you. Yeah, well, you, yeah. <laughs> Shout out to Sauce. That boy was. We got. Uh, I don't know if I'm gonna be more discreet. I love man. Sauce. I love uh, Sauce. I gotta be more discreet. And that was no dumb questions. We answered it fully, right? Yeah, it's a hand warmer. That's it, right? It usually keeps your hand warm or dry. And if you just wear one, you're wearing it because it's an accessory. 
Yeah, or yeah, or just like old a, school. Yeah. Could you actually wear an actual fanny pack in a game? I mean, yeah, it depends on what you put in there, but why? I don't think, yeah, I don't think there's anything against it. Like if you wear, but I mean, what else could you put in there that would be nothing? Are we starting a new trend? No. I might wear a fanny pack to the next game. <laughs> what 